morning, good morning, good morning, one, two, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship. We are very excited and glad that you are able to join us. Let us hear a few announcements. First, today is the annual meeting. So we pray and hope that you will be able to stay for the annual meeting. Today is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. I'm also told that today is the Scott Sunday. So those people are in Scott would like to recognize that and we say thank you for all that you have to do. After the service, we'll have the opportunity to eat together. So, food is good, right? Yeah. Are there any other announcements? If not, please stand as you are able. living and growing in God's amazing grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the realm of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord reveals Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon a harp to our God. God provides food for the cattle and for all the young ravens when they cry. God 
but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord and those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Please be seated. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We want to use this time for or Jerry Salmon. Do we have kids that would like to come over? They're a little bit shy. Okay. That's all right. Then we can go into the readings. Good morning. Good morning. I haven't ever been a reader. I thought I better get that out first. So if I screw up, please understand. <clears throat> the Judeans in exile have a good reason to be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world, the God who subdues, 
subdues the rulers of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. First reading, Isaiah 40, 21, 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name because he is great in strength mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life, and speed of God. God entrusted Paul with the responsibility of bringing the gospel to diverse people. Hence, the focus of Paul's ministry is not his own rights or privileges as an apostle, but the privilege of serving God by freely sharing the good news of Christ with others. Second reading, 1 Corinthians 9, 16, 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am trusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To to those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in the blessings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Yeah. And Tiffany said it would be short. I don't think it was short. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, 
They entered the house of Simeon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simeon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they took him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with favorite diseases and cast out many demons. And he could not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to the deserted place and there he prayed. And Simeon and all his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went through all Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Again, this is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is one of the verses I like. Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It is good to wait on God because God's time is the best. Sometimes we don't know what to do next. But whenever we are in and we wait on God, God is there for us. Our strength is renewed. And wait on him. Few questions for you. Have you ever gotten sick? I assume all of us have gotten sick. It's not a good feeling. It's not pretty. What do you do when you get sick? Let's talk. What do you do when you get sick? Lay in bed, want to get well, go to hospital, go to clinic, pray, drink juice, all kinds of things, right? And some people just wait for that special hug, right? What's about the food do you want to eat? So a lot of things do happen. Have you ever had an opportunity to take care of a sick loved one? And then? We all. It's tough. And how do you feel when a person is well? You feel happy. You feel released. But sometimes the body got a way of saying, hey, you need to rest a little bit. All right? Well, sickness is not an easy thing. People get sick, they want to be well. Into this text, we'll look at five things. We don't have to go through all of them. Worship is in there. Healing is in there. Service is in there. Prayer, mission, or evangelize. Let's go through them. Jesus cares for the home and individual. He don't just particular about individual, but he also concerned about the home. In today's text, we see that Jesus went into Samus and Andrew's house. It is good to approach life with compassion and kindness towards others and ourselves, and to strive to create a safe and loving environment for all. The worship of God, worship Jesus brought his presence into the house. After the synagogue, the synagogue was just next door or just a few 
feet away. There where he went to. So from the synagogue, they went to the house. The presence of Jesus brought hope to Peter's house. Brought hope. Fellowship. Remember Jesus have called the disciples already. They are with him. And going into his house, into Peter's house, gave them hope. We realize what hope was like for them. The presence of Jesus brought healing and help to Peter. To help to Peter's mother-in-law. Not only hope, but help. What kind of help? A healing. Jesus extended hands, expressed his genuine love and desire to meet the woman's need. What was her need? She wanted to be healed. She had fever. We didn't know what kind of fever she had. In today's world, if someone has fever, we think about infection. Let's imagine what was it like for them when they had no diagnosis in that manner. We didn't know. Maybe we just didn't know. And fever knocked her down and knocked her off. She couldn't do what she normally did. She was in distress. Waiting for healing to come. Can you imagine perhaps they did not have the kind of medication that we have today? Maybe she didn't have Tylenol. Right? All kinds of treatment for fewer nowadays. Maybe she didn't have the antibody to take. So she was just sitting and lying in bed and waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, let's see what happened. The power of a touch. Jesus touch tells us volumes about what Jesus is like and how much he loves us. To touch us in healing and in love. He went about doing that. Jesus took her by the hand and raised her up. As you can see also a picture up there. Jesus took her by her hand and lifted her up. He was not afraid to touch her. He said, get up. You are here. Let's imagine that. The touch of Jesus can vary from person to person. For her, it was fever. For someone else, it might be something different that they are sick of or in need of Christ. And he is there to say, I'm here to touch you. His touch brought about healing, joy, and peace. Sometimes God does that to us too. When we are grieving, he comes and says, I will comfort you. When we are sick and trying to give up, he comes and says, I'm with you. Sometimes when we sigh, he says, I am staying with you. I'm not leaving you. Jesus lifted her up and Jesus do lift us up. And Jesus reminds us that he is with us all the time. His touch has the power to cleanse. Jesus has that power. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be that clean. And immediately his leprosy was clean. His touch has the power to give sight to the blind. He touched, then he touched him, that sight, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And the eyes are open. And Jesus straight charge charges saying, See that no man know it. The touch. The touch has the power to heal. Then he took him aside for the multitude and put his finger into the ears and spit and touched his tongue. And straightway his ears were open and strength of his tongue was loose. 
and he spoke again. The touch. Jesus touched also even had a woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. She became healed when she touched the garment of Jesus. It be you. Who touched me? And she said, yeah, I touched you. I wanted to be healed. Sometimes Jesus' touch can come to other people too. Through family, through friends, through colleagues. When you are sitting and they come touch you, say, oh yeah, I needed that touch. For the kids, when they receive the touch from the parents or the great great grandparents, they feel happy. Sometimes they stop crying because of touch. Touch has power. Touch can heal. Touch can bring up peace. Touch can bring up joy. But I see that touch can also be dangerous sometimes. The presence of Jesus brought dedication and service to Peter's house. Service. When she got healed, straight just say she was able to offer hospitality to the guests. Service. The worship, now service. This lady was able to serve. We see the woman's response after healing. She immediately got up and began to wait on them. As Jesus restored her to health, he restored her to complete self. The, this woman calling was in service. Everyone has an area of service or calling. That was her area. That's what she knew how to do best. And that's what she went for. It's important when, we, when people get healed and want to go back to what they used to do. And this lady was not exempted. She did what she could do. But it's also important for us to serve God and to serve one another in the Lord. And this service can lead out to be sides in a house. It can also lead to the outside. Jesus cares for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have an everlasting life. The love of God, the love for you myself, caused Jesus to go into the world to proclaim. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do love for the word. He cares for the word. And he was ready to go to the other side to proclaim. Come unto me all ye that labor in a heavy lady and I will give you rest. So Jesus' work comes and opens the door for all people. Jesus saw people as they were and are and Jesus was doing good everywhere he went. Jesus was full of compassion so he was ready to go. He healed and cast out unclean spirits. And that's what Christ did. Then he also prayed. So worship, serve, and then he prayed. Jesus knew that prayer is very important. Prayer is a way of communicating. So his sense of prayer was way up. So what did he do? He went early in the morning. Before daybreak. To go pray. He went to a solitary place, a deserted place. For him, it was quiet, a deserted place we don't know, the main area. But sometimes some people deserted place may be in that room. Some may be in a car, some may be in a shower, some will be in a forest, some are exercising, whatever place it may be. It is important for us to pray. Maybe a white place where it's a silent prayer. Prayer is important. It's a way of life for us as Christians. Because prayer encourages people. Reason why he prayed to come to care of God. Maybe Jesus was tired. He needed to be recharged. Prayer gives some people hope and strength. Prayer gives access to God. And prayer also brings or makes us humble before him. Prayer is Persevering in prayer is asking, seeking, and knocking. Not giving up in that. To seek the face of God. To ask. To knock. 
Jesus knew for him to go into the world, he had a commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I, I have commanded you, and so I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. The Great Commission. So for him to worship, to heal, to pray, and a great commission to evangelize, he knew that he had a mission to fulfill. So after his prayer life, when people were searching, he said, let's go to the other times that I may preach there also. People of God, God is there all of the time to carry out his mission into the world, to preach, to teach, to heal, to feed, to save lives everywhere he went. And that's what Christ came to do. And that's what Christ is also commissioned all of us to do, to love one another, to pray for each other in the house, out of the house, to do what he may be requiring us to do because prayer is important. So remember the, 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 the fingers. As we think about worship, we think about healing, we think about service, we think about prayer, and we think about evangelizing. That it's important for us to do this thing. And he had to recharge. Prayer gives some people discernment. When, how, where to do things. May God's word encourage us to continue to be in light and in love of God. Because when God sees us as we are, we see others as they are. When Simon, mother-in-law, was healed by Christ, she went by to do service. God can touch all of us and we can also touch others in a lot of different ways, in words, in deeds, in action, love, in calmness, in prayers, coming together, doing what God has called us to do. It's all important in the sight of God. May God strengthen us as we continue to serve Him more and more. Amen. as you are able. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on a purchase pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The response to the prayer to this hear our prayer. As we celebrate Christ in body and human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Everlasting God, you bring your hidden power to the church. Give your church a spirit of unity and prayer that we descend your way for us in the world. Lord, in your mercy, creator of the ends of the earth, you make the grass grow and send rain for the soil. Bring your creation in harmony and balance. Give animals their food and provide healthy shelter for all people. Inspire us to honor the miraculous beauty of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, God with all equal, your steadfast love endures forever. We thank you for today's council meeting. We thank you for today's annual meeting. We thank you for those that have served on the council and those that will be serving in the coming year. We are grateful for this congregation. We are thankful for John and Mav for their services. We are grateful to you for this congregation. Guard them to serve with compassion and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, God, who strengthens. You lift up with you hand and all who are suffering. Heal those who are broken hearted and strengthen the weak and all in need. Lord, in your mercy. God who gives power to the faint, challenge us to share the faith stories of what God has done in our lives. Open to us to receive the unique ways that God is at work in your people. We thank you for all that have gathered here today to worship and those that couldn't be here. Lord, in your mercy, we live in prayer, the fallen people, and those you name in your heart at this time. Mark, the end, Linda. Lorraine, Julie, Carol, the family of Marilyn Jacob, the family of Helen Bug. Go, you call each star by name, remember all who have died. Shed all who moon with your mercy and care, and give us hope in your promise of salvation. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercede for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And we share God's peace with one another.
you. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we may receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whom name we pray. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave the disciples to take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave the disciples to take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Sitting together, let's pray as Jesus taught his disciples, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give for this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are invited to partake of the meal. The meal is ready.
not made of body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Just for a quick announcement, uh, during the last hymn, we will sit and do the singing. And after that, we do uh, a slideshow. And then from a slideshow, we do a bishop or report to us. We we'll use that time as a transition, so if you need to use the restroom, you can. And uh, after that, then the council president will call the annual meeting in order. So those of you online, you might give us five or 10 minutes so the annual meeting will start because we need a transition from any this service to the annual meeting. So God bless you as we sit. God bless you as we go. God bless you as we fellowship together now and forever. Amen. Yeah, that's 2023 pictures. Pictures in review, so. So we use this time as a transition, so people will set up. Do what I have to do.
Yeah. 